Hey everybody, I'm gonna show you guys how to make um, my favorite thing, which is pumpkin Mickey, Mickey ears. Um, I haven't gotten to make a pair up until um, somebody had requested them for a um, swap that I'm involved in. And as you guys know, I do a few of those throughout the year. Um, so, I'm gonna go over how to make these. Um, there's certain, I'm gonna talk about certain variations and all that jazz as well, okay? Um, in the file section, of the group is the zip file that contains both SVGs, um, silhouette files, and PDF, PNG files, that sort of thing. So you can either use your Cricut silhouette um, or just print, print and cut. I own both the Cricut and silhouette and I just print and cut it. So you'll get a sheet like this if you use the PDF, all right? Um, and I scooched this over so it wasn't cutting. What you're gonna do is you're gonna cut out all your pieces and then cut out the black Mickey face. So these are sort of your pattern. Woo! Sorry, dropping stuff. Um, so these are sort of your pattern pieces when you're all done. As you can see, I cut inside of the black lines, okay? Um, and that'll be your outline. So Next thing I did is I chose to make mine out of felt. Um, I just like the way of the look of it. It makes me feel like cozy fall, that sort of thing. Um, so I just used acrylic um, craft felt. I bought it by the yard in orange. And then this is the golden yellow. It also comes in like a lighter yellow at Joann's. Um, so I use those. Um, the issue with felt though is, is acrylic craft felt can be difficult to cut um, with your silhouette or um, Cricut machine. Um, so what I recommend is actually if you're going to use felt um, for yours and you're going to cut it out via your machine is to get a wool blend felt instead. Um, I tend to buy mine from National Wovens, um, but I know you can get it a couple other places. Um, and they come in sheets. Um, the other thing is that um, to help it also cut through is that you can use heat bond on the back um, and that'll help the machine kind of stabilize it and cut through it better. Um, I've just found that the um, cut machines don't do the greatest. I mean the ones with the Maker and the Cameo 4 do a lot better job with the rotary blade, that sort of thing. Um, but I just find it's easier to cut by hand. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you, um, which is a good trick that I use, and you're going to see me use it later, um, are these friction pens. I got it from my local um, quilt store, um, but I don't know if Joann's carries them or not, but I'm sure you can get them on Amazon. That's what I chase all the pattern pieces on onto my actual material um, because you just take an iron to it and it will dissolve. Okay, so... Sorry guys, I have two cats that are at wit's end up in everybody's business. So I have all my pattern pieces cut out. And ultimately what you're going to need is you're going to need one per ear. So you'll need two total of the faces. You'll need one per ear, so two total of the yellow. And then you're going to need two total of the big circle for the back. Okay, um, you're also going to need four of these little circles for the front and the back, and then you're going to need your inner pieces. Okay, so the inner pieces is up to you. Um, I use um, quarter inch foam and I glue it together. I'll show it to you later when I assemble. And these are the pieces I use to cut that out with. Um, I know some people like the no sew method. And use the, I don't think I have any available on the top of my head. Um, they use the coasters. So you can still use the coasters. Just make sure that your circles um, are big enough. I will also make this file as an SVG as well. So you can go in and Cricut or Silhouette um, and enlarge them to the size that you need. So that way you want them to be a quarter inch bigger than your coasters okay um that allows for a seam allowance okay um the seam allowance to kind of tuck over if you're going to do a no sew method um i hand stitch these um but you can also sew them as well everything has a quarter inch seam allowance 
All right. So once you have your pieces cut out, um, the next step is if you can see all my actual ears, um, you can see down the middle here and then kind of off to the side. I decided to put the, and then up on the ears, I don't know, because I have the light over my sewing machine, so it's a little dark. Um, I decided to put in kind of like the lines like a pumpkin has. I was thinking after the fact it would be really cool to do out of um, corduroy that has the vertical lines. Um, and the other thing I wanted to mention that I forgot um, about fabric type is that um, you can make these out of woven. Um, so your cotton fabric, but you can't cut the face out, okay? Because you're going to get fraying all around here and you're going to have to fray check that sort of thing. So I have put just the face separately. So you could actually do the face if you wanted out of heat transfer vinyl and heat press that on and then do the rest of the ears. So that way you guys have that as an option. Okay, so the next step is to sew my ears uh, sew my lines onto my ears and because I'm not sometimes can't follow I can barely follow lines the greatest to kind of make these look okay I am just taking my friction pen and literally just drawing one line down the center so I don't know if you guys can you guys see that yeah I can see that on the camera and then I'm gonna take the other line and I'm going to start right outside of the end point of his mouth here and then kind of draw down, keeping with kind of like an arc. And I have about half an inch, I'm going to say, um, away from that central line is sort of where it's going to end. You don't want it too far out to the side because you have to remember you're going to have a quarter inch seam allowance. So you want to make sure you see it. So we're, I'm going to do that on both sides. And remember, this is, if you're skipping around, this is a friction pen. The, this will iron off. It's a special pen. Please, if you use a regular pen, I guarantee you your lines will not come off. So then I'm also going to do it for the ear. And I already, this is just one ear. I already sewed up the other ear and assembled it just for time's sake. Because I figured you didn't want to watch me do double on something. So for the ear, I go down the middle. You can see my lines aren't very straight. And then I'm going to come from the point at the end and then kind of make like a football shape with a line down the center. So there's that side of it. And there's the other side. All right. Ta-da. All right. So now I'm going to make you guys a little bit sick because I'm going to move the camera over to my sewing machine so you guys can see. Oh, the other thing I didn't mention is you do want to um, glue down the face, okay? Um, because otherwise it's going to kind of flop up. So I just, you can use um, like tacky glue or they do make felt glue. I just have Mod Podge, but what I've kind of realized with the Mod Podge, it needs like 24 hours to dry. So this is kind of pointless. Um, but on the back side of the face I found is the easiest. I just use a paintbrush, which is hard as a rock because I used it earlier and left it out. Um, and I'm just painting the glue on the back in those areas. Okay. Boop. And making a hot mess. As usual. So my craft room looks like a current disaster zone. I need to clean it so badly. There's just stuff everywhere because I prep stuff. I usually do craft shows in December. Mainly to get rid of like demo stuff, that sort of thing that takes up all my space. But things that I find on Pinterest, I just want to make that sort of thing throughout the year. Well, they've all got canceled due to COVID. So I'm like swimming in boxes of stuff that normally would go out the door. So it's going to sit. But I have a couple causes I'm going to donate it to. So it won't be around. So 
Mod Podge on the back, just around the face. And then I'm just putting it back down on my yellow. And like I said, it's gonna take 24 hours to kind of dry. So kind of pointless, but it'll help hold it down in the end. All right. So I'm gonna move my camera now. Sorry guys, probably making you guys a little sick. And hopefully you will be able to see my sewing machine without me blocking, I am hoping. Okay, let me turn it on. All right, so I am just gonna use a straight stitch. Um, I'm at a length of 2.5. Um, make sure that you back tack um, two or three stitches on the end of each row um, to hold your stitching in. Um, if, if you, especially if you're going to be, I finished it with hand stitching. I mean, if you're going to be gluing it around or if you're going to um, do a quarter inch seam allowance sew um, and do it that way instead, um, then you don't really need to worry about it. Just make sure that, you know, you've caught all of it in there. So, I, I mean, I, it's probably better to back tack to be safe than sorry. So, I just do a couple stitches, put it in reverse, two or three back, and then just power down. And then back tack at the end, and off. So, that's one line. And we got two more on this one. And I'm just following those lines um that I drew on and not the best lead either and if you need to pick up your foot to kind of go with the curve that'll help you especially on that smaller ear I pick it up a pick it up I can kind of get away with not on this occasionally sometimes I do all right so it's okay if this gets off um it, it'll kind of hide in your seam allowance. So don't forget to back tack. And straight stitch following your three lines. And I mean, if you can't sew um, or have a sewing machine, um, you can certainly, you don't have to add these lines. Um, I just did it for appearance sakes. So, oh, come on. And then I just clip all of my threads. So if you can't sew, um, like I said, you don't have to do this. Um, you can even, if you hand sew, you can hand sew it instead. Um, it's just to give it dimension, um, just so it looks more like a pumpkin. In my opinion. But, like I said, it'd be really cool. If somebody makes them, because I saw these awesome ears down at Disney when we were down um, that were made out of corduroy. They weren't pumpkins. I think they were just regular ears. And then they had like, um, uh, geez Louise, a black and white kind of plaid bow to them. But it'd be really cool to have the pumpkins out of corduroy. I was even looking online and like I couldn't find... Well, at least not on Amazon. I could find corduroy, but I was thinking about cutting up a corduroy pillow to do them. But I don't really have the time, and I had felt ready to go, so I... Trust me, I don't need to buy any more craft supplies anyway, but I decided to use what I had. But if somebody does a pair like that, I really want to see them, because I think they'd be really cool. Alright, so last line... Um, the ear is the same thing. It's just a straight stitch. Make sure you back tack on the ends. Um, like I said, kind of on the curves, I kind of tend to pick up the foot just to, I don't know if you can see because my one hand's in the way. Um, just to kind of get that curve. There we go. All right. So... Um, that is all that you will need your sewing machine for, unless you're going to sew them shut, okay? Um, with your sewing machine versus I hand stitch them, um, with a blanket stitch, 
Um, that's what gave me this look here. Okay, this is all blanket stitch. Um, so it's sort of up to you. So next step before we sew them shut um, is I have to move over to my iron and get rid of all these blue lines. Okay, so let me actually, my iron isn't plugged in of course. All right, so you guys are gonna get really sick from me moving it because I kind of work at like three different stations here. So Ooh, maybe I can clip it. Sorry guys. All right, because I'm gonna pick it up and move it just so you can watch these lines kind of vanish. So here are my lovely lines. Okay. And getting ready. Say goodbye to all those lines. Coolest thing ever. See? No more blue lines. See how that has blue lines? No more. Hold on. Maybe. I got too much stuff in my hands. Sorry, guys. I'm making you guys really sick. I'm just using my heat press because. See, no more lines. Awesome, right? All right, let me unplug this. Maybe it's a little hard to do one-handed. Okay, so that's unplugged. All right. So let me put you guys back in here. And then next step is I got to hand stitch these all shut. Um, what I'm using is DMC thread. It's um, number 608 is the orange that I am using. Um, what I do is I take a strand. Um, the strand has six threads in it. And then I separate it in half. So I have three threads. And then I just lovely knot the end. Whoop. Sorry, guys. Y'all know my video skills suck by now. So I just knot the end of the thread. And I need a needle. And I am, see three threads? I don't know, that's blurry. Maybe. I feel like when you're on camera under pressure, you can't thread your needle. There we go. Alright. So, next up is, so where do I start on these? Okay. Let me kind of trim this yellow up so it's not sticking out as far. So, if you have any yellow sticking out, like, a lot, just kind of trim that. Okay. So, I'm going to use this. I am going to kind of center it over its face. And then I am going to use pins and put them in the corners. Okay, so the corner of this, I put my pin there. And then on the other side, that is my stopping and starting points, okay? So I'm going to, if you guys know how to do a blanket stitch, you can kind of skip over this, but um, I, they're about a quarter inch in, so... Start at my pin, and then I don't need that one. Okay. And then I come up through the back, and then I put my needle through the loop. Okay. Come up through the back, needle through the loop. Okay. And you know what would be really, really helpful? If I was sewing two layers together, sorry guys, or three layers I should say together, we'll leave that. Mm, yeah. Sorry. Let me re-thread my needle. 
be really helpful if I had added the back piece. So you need your black, your back orange circle. Sorry guys. I'm just gonna kind of cut this yellow here. And I'm going to see where I started this, which is here. All right, so we'll start this again. So, knotted on the back, comes up, up through the back, up through the back, through your loop. Up through the back, through your loop. And some people on their thumb will put markings on um, to get the stitch length appropriate. I've just done this enough times that um, I get pretty darn close. So up through the back, through your loop. Up through the back. Oop. Through your loop. It's a lot harder to do with the camera in the way. I'm trying to make sure I'm in focus, guys. I'm sorry. Getting there. Up through the back, through your loop. Sorry guys, it's hurt my back to bend over. You guys don't really want to watch me show that, especially if you know how to do blanket stitch. But it's just up through the back through the loop. It's a super easy stitch to do. Um, like I said, you can, some people will put markings on their thumb and then they just line it up with their thumb and that will get them all even. But if you need kind of like, because I know I'm all over the place and not really getting in focus because I'm just trying to get it done quickly for anybody that um, isn't doing a blanket stitch because um, they're going to no sew them um, or just sew them with a sewing machine um, or for those who know how to do a blanket stitch I'm just trying to move a little quickly but it is super easy all you do is just come up from the back put your needle through the loop up from the back through the loop and that's what it'll look like Okay, because you're going through that loop each time. All right, and we are back at the beginning. So, put that out. Oops, sorry guys. One more stitch. And then flip it over. I just go through the stitch. Okay. And then through the loop that I made, and that knots it off. So I do it twice, so through the loop, and then through the loop you've made. And then I just cut them. All right, so pumpkin's done. Um, I just have to do his ear real quick. Sorry guys. I tried to prep everything so it wouldn't be so long, but I guess, you know, whatever. All right. So, same thing. Um, I'm just going to take my template, um, kind of center it on the markings, and then just mark the ends with your pins. So you know your stop and start point. Okay. So see, I'm just marking where these, these points are. Okay. And then I've knotted my thread 
I'm just coming up from the back and this is just the same blanket stitch that you did on um, the main pumpkin body you're gonna do for both ears remember I just have the one ear um, because I already made the other ear to save time because I didn't think you guys wanted to see me hand so especially because I'm not the best I don't think I'm the best teacher when it comes to this because I kind of speed through it but um, like I've been saying, it's just up the back and through that loop you create. So you come up through the back and just put your needle through the loop. Almost there, guys. We're like halfway, I guess. I feel a little dark because my arm, yeah, my arm is, sorry, blocking the light. All right. I like this look. People do some really cute ears. Um, where they use felt because the nice thing about felt is it doesn't fray um, so and it comes in like a huge variety of colors especially if you get on national wovens with the wool felt crazy amount of colors um, but they do with oh, what are they there's gibbies or chibis chibi chibis whatever they are I don't know um, but they're really cute um, kind of like the little Japanese um, chunky characters with the big eyes I don't know but they're cute people do them out of felt and do this sorry guys I was getting off camera so last stitch so up last stitch so it's just up from the back you'll have that loop that's created then so don't pull all the way through you're going to use that loop go through that loop and that creates your stitch so to tie it off remember you're going to go through the loop the this loop stitch here and then through the loop you've created, don't pull it all the way through. And do that twice. Hopefully that helps. If you guys have any questions, just uh, always let me know. Alright. So we are done with that. So you're going to have your ear and you got your Mickey head. Now I'm going to pick up the camera and move it over to where I've been gluing. Um, because what we're going to do is give these some innards and assemble so my next very messy spot all right so first thing we're gonna do is stuff the ear um, so I'm using this is quarter inch foam um, you can get it at Michaels what I do is because it's foam I can squeeze it like so and I am just going to put it through the opening in the bottom and the nice thing about felt is that it's a little bit stretchy um, just enough that you can kind of manipulate it pretty well and so I just stuff that in I make sure my corners are kind of lined up sometimes I get a little skewy and kind of just have to work it so that your corners are in there all right and then you just kind of flatten it out and there is one ear see I promise you have two ears all right, so next thing is your pumpkin body, okay? And how I make my ears is I cut those two and I use two pieces of um, quarter inch foam. I glue them together to give it um, some security. And then on this side, so I don't stuff one side of them, this is fusible fleece, okay? Um, you can buy it at Joann's. I buy it when they have their 60% off interfacing. Um, you, there's two sides. One's nice and smooth and one's rough because it's the fusible part. Um, I glue the fusible part down. They also make, um, hold on, stop, come on, don't eat my threads. Sorry guys. I gotta cover up my sewing machine because my cat, one of my cats, is eating my threads. So, fusible fleece, they do make it where it's not interface, but I use it for other things, so I buy the interface. I glue the soft side up, okay? All glued together to make a sandwich. Um, this is going to go towards the back. So what I do is I flip my base over. I give it a good squeeze towards the fleece side. It's a little bit harder to do than just doing the ear. And I just make a taco and...
This is hard to do on camera. Um, and just, these just pop in, I promise. There we go. It's just hard when you're trying to make sure you catch everything on the camera for you guys. Sorry, I'm using my body to shove it in. There you go. And I mean, if you wanted flatter ears, like I kind of puffed mine up so they were around like a pumpkin. Um, I mean, these would this would be great. Actually, we need to do the gingerbread, gingerbread man ones. And I don't know if I would puff those, but anyway. So next thing is to stuff the front of it so you kind of get the puffy look. I'm just using regular um, polyfill stuffing. They also make a silk based one um, that doesn't come out through the like openings in your fabric a lot more um, but this is just what I have and I bought it in bulk a while ago so I've been trying to use up the bulk supplies like in a massive hamper and I would love to use it all up so I am just stuffing him until he is stuffed A little bit more. There you go. So he is all stuffed. Okay. Stuff them until you like them. And then we're going to glue this bottom shut both on the main body and on your ear as well. Um, for both of them, you're going to start by gluing down your back flap first um, because then it's hidden. So... I like to use the Gorilla glue sticks. Um, they hold a lot better than the regular ones. You can get them at Walmart, Joann's, that sort of thing. And I just put a ribbon of glue on there and just fold forward. And that's your back. And then I just put glue on there. Fold. There's your pumpkin ear. All right. So next thing is the back piece. Maybe. There's a trick with glue sticks that if you put a little bit of hot glue, um, kind of melt with your front, the stick you're putting in. Um, I just don't have time for that. It works really well when you're doing like costume design with the big industrial ones that have the big glue sticks that are like really, really long. So they don't go anywhere as you melt the end of the one coming into it to the one behind. But anyway, so we're then going to glue in here. So we glued the back, time to glue the front, and I kind of put a ribbon on the bottom here. And fold down. Yowzers, try not to burn your fingers. And I just hold this down. Um, because it's two layers, um, I found that you just need to hold it for a good 30 seconds just to make sure that it is held down. I've had it come up on a couple. All right, so next is the placement of your ears. So because I'm using the um, quarter inch foam, it gives you a good lip um, to help secure your ear onto, okay? So I just kind of eyeballed where I think they should place. It's actually three finger widths is what I've kind of determined is where I like the placement of it from the top. And I have tiny fingers, so. Just kind of eyeball and then I just put a ribbon of glue on the bottom of the ear and I'm setting it behind my um, stitching okay you can also sew these on um, I mean I just 
This is quicker. <laughs> I like the look, but I don't like it that much where you could actually sew these in place instead um, with a blanket, sort of like a blank, you know, over the blanket stitching. Just weave it in. Okay. So that's one ear. And then we're going to use our other ear. Just a ribbon of glue on the bottom. And woo -hoo -hoo. attach. So next step is I made Mickey ears. And um, for the tutorial, I decided why not make Minnie? Why not? So we're going to make Minnie. So I want Minnie to have um, a burlap bow. Okay, I'm just figuring out how big I need to make it. So I'm just using burlap by the yard. I will actually put in the exact measurements I end up using for the bow. Um, I'll, I'll, it'll have a um, SVG um, and a PDF. Um, but my square is approximately five inches by four inches. Okay. And with burlap, it unravels. So be very, very careful because um, I don't want you guys to accidentally glue your fingers, which I do all the time. Sorry guys, I'm just cutting two more. Because I have a third set that I'm going to do half Mickey and half Minnie on. So I'll just use that one to... Alright. So what I do is I fold in the edges um, just so it doesn't unravel. So I just put a ribbon of glue on there and just fold up and be very yowzers. Careful not to burn your fingers. Or you can be like me that probably has no feeling left in their fingers from all the hot glue they use. Probably. And my fingers are going to look really, really gross after this. All right. See how that unravels? That's what we don't want. So I'm just folding it in roughly about a quarter to about a quarter of an inch. You guys can see. Sorry, guys. You know I'm not used to working with the camera and I love showing you guys how to do stuff. Cause that's, you know, that's my goal is that I want everybody to be able to make it. Stuff is so easy to make um, if you're just a little crafty. Um, you know, it's just about having the right files and everything. See, this is hard for me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I don't even know what I'm catching on camera. Ribbon of glue, fold up a quarter inch. And I am doing this on ow, all four sides, okay? And burning the crap out of my fingers in the meantime. They make these little finger protectors um, that I refuse to use um, that come from... The dollar store. They're like pink. You can get them a couple. You can get them at Hobby Lobby too. Just depends how big. I've heard one of them's smaller, one of them's bigger. I can't remember. I want to say the ones at Dollar Tree are bigger. I just burn my fingers. Okay. So the next thing I do is I take the short ends and bring them to the middle. So just put a ribbon of glue on the short end, okay, not the long end, short end, and bring to the center. And we're going to hope this is the right size because guess you did not test this and just decided they wanted mini instead of Mickey. So ribbon of glue on your short ends and you're bringing to the middle. All right, got it? Got it, guys. All right. Yeah, that should actually be the right size. Wow. 
All right, so the next thing you're going to do is your middle piece. And you're just going same thing. I just put a ribbon on the edge and you're gonna bring it to the middle. Okay, to the middle. Don't worry, I promise all this stuff comes off your fingers at the end. So the other long end, so these are the long ends, not the short ends. And you're just bringing to the middle. Okay. And like I said, the exact um, PDF square will be in the files. I'll get you all you need. All right. So next thing you're going to do is fold in the middle and then the outside you fold back. So fold in the middle, bend the outsides back, and then we are going to then take our middle, and this is a little long because this is what I use for my regular bows, so, so I'm just going to cut it a little bit. So like I said, I'll get you the exact measurements I end up using. It's just... Looks like I just need to hack off half an inch. Okay. There we go. And we'll just let this set. And there's your mini bow. So, mini bow then just gets on. Goes on like that. Alright. So, I'm just going to put... Let's see where it sits. So it sits like kind of just on the back lip here. So I'm just going to put some glue there. And then just center it. And the nice thing is when you sewed those lines on, that's the center. And I'm just holding that in place to glue down. So why don't actually, so you guys don't have to wait, I'll do the other two mini ones and I'll do a full mini set. And I'll just show you guys a picture. I'll do Mickey and Minnie on this one so you guys don't have to sit through me burning my fingers on another bow. All right. So there's Minnie. Okay. So the next thing that I do, actually, you do have to sit through because I got to do the center bow. Woohoo. Um, where the heck? Excellent question. No. You know where my trash can got off. Sorry. So, next thing we're going to do is the <clears throat> attaching it to the headband. And then the center bow is just done the same way, so I won't do a whole video on that. Um, I'm just going to attach these, and then, then you can just kind of decorate it however you want. I bought these leaves from the dollar store. Um, that is what made up the center of my other one. So I use those. Um, I also have, I'm going to actually, on the mini ones, put these flowers on. So those, just with the leaves. So you just kind of play around, whatever you want to add, that sort of thing. But I'm just going to show you how I attach. I have this template that I use. Um, it's a little off just because I like to now set my ears about a quarter of an inch back from this front line here. I like them right about there. Um, it's about, for me, I have tiny fingers. Um, it's about four finger lengths, three to four. It's about four finger lengths. Um, everybody's different. So I'm going to put Mickey on this side. I'll put Minnie on the other. So all I do is run glue along the bottom. And then I just set them a quarter of an inch back. I use the template. I don't know if you guys can see that. And then I just go in the middle. And then I just, ow. I got set a little bit too far back on that one. I got my fingers. Okay, there we go. Um, and then I just hold them for about 30 seconds. Okay. Um, the other thing you can do is sometimes to hide my glue where I glue them to the band. Um, here's a, another pair that I did. These are happy birthday years. 
Um, but you can see on the bottom, I ran some like rickrack around it. Um, and that's to hide my seams, okay? So this is to hide the um, no sew seam or the sewing seam. And then this hides your glue around the bottom. It's just to give it a more polished look. I don't do it for every pair. I didn't do it for these. Um, these wouldn't look bad with it around the bottom. I certainly, I finished the sides like this so I didn't have to do that. All right, so Mickey's on. So let's do mini. So I put my headband back in place there. Put some glue on the bottom. I kind of run two because I have, you know, um, I can think. I have um, two foam things in there. So, and then I just about a quarter of an inch back, eighth of an inch back from that line. And hold. I'm just holding. Give it a good 30 seconds. So the last thing is to attach the center bow. I'll have all those measurements um, with the SVG PDF printout for you guys. It's just making it the same way that I made the center bow. And I have a whole video on how to do the actual center, how I do my center bows. But you can then attach any sort of center bow then. I just don't want to make this video any longer. It's already over 45 minutes, so... But I'll get up pictures of the, all three um, completed sets um, when I'm all done in a little bit. All right. So there you go. So there's your ears. Only thing that's left is I just add a center bow. I mean, or if it's for male, we'll grant you one. Huh? You could have mini on there. But um, aren't they cute? So that's that. Um, I'll show you pictures of all the completed ones. If you guys have any questions at all, just let me know. Um, and if you need links to any videos, just let me know. All right.